Okay, so apparently Facebook didn't like what Mike Frank had to say. So it froze up on me, and I think it ended my life. So I'm back now for part two. I'm going to try and get Mike back on. Um, let me invite him to see, to watch. Because I don't know what the heck happened. Oh, Derek's back. Roy's back. Um, yeah, I got cut off, and it like totally just ended my live. I'm not sure why. I don't know if some hater reported me and said I was saying bad stuff. I don't know. Um, so I'm going to at least wait for Mike. Okay, Mike is back. Let me try and bring Mike back on because he was talking right in the middle of our freeze. Uh, he's back. Hi, Mike. Hey, how's it going? Sorry about that. I'm going to take responsibility for it. Uh, you should always blame the white man anyway, so that's probably a good way to start as a baseline. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I don't know what happened there. It just froze. And I was like, yeah, I thought we were on frozen or something. Anyway, I mean, other than that, though, I thought everything about the movie was good. It's, it's in my, definitely in my top five. Um, I don't know that it's better than like, I don't know. It's, it's good. I don't know if it's my number one, but it's definitely in my top five. So. so you didn't like the way that it ended with Thanos and the sunset and back at Titan and all that right yeah it is. i don't know it, it wasn't it wasn't it, it didn't have any sort of like if you're going to connect two movies together at least give me a cliffhanger give me something to to bite onto and, and and wait for and i get all these comparisons people are making and i understand it's not supposed to be satisfying but like give me a crumb or something to hold on to you know uh given I think part of it is they can get away with this because they know no matter what happens, everybody's going to be there for the next one too. And they got like 82 million movies, <laughs> you know, but uh, I was reading this article and it makes a great point is like, unfortunately the money in Hollywood makes it where we don't take any of this stuff seriously anyway, because we know anybody who follows these will be like, well, I know how many movies this dude is contracted for, or I know how many movies this person has left. So I know they're going to be there. Um, now, given that could just mean that they're in a, you know, cameo role for flashbacks, or whatever else. But for the most part, I, I would wager that nobody who follows these movies thinks anything we saw is going to be permanent. Right. I agree. One hundred percent. Especially when when Black Panther got poofed. I was like, uh-uh, because I already know it's a part two. So I ain't even going to worry about that. <laughs> Yeah, could you imagine, like, if we didn't live in a society where we had the internet, like, the outrage of, like, <laughs> hey, this dude just made, like, the biggest selling movie, and suddenly you kill him the movie after? Like, it's bad enough that, like, you know, black characters are usually the first to die in movies, but now y'all have a blockbuster, and y'all are just gonna kill him off in the next movie? He ain't even get his, you know, one month of fame? I'm just done? Like, come on. <laughs> right. There would be all hell to pay. But we all know that... I. <laughs> And that's the thing, as I always say this with story writing in any TV show or movie, anytime you can manipulate time, it makes writers lazy. Yeah, because you can always just go back and fix it or make it different. Or... Yeah, so if I, if I do a shitty storyline, like, y'all remember, you remember Heroes? Yeah. The TV show Heroes? It's like one of my favorite shows. Yeah. So until the third. Anytime, anytime there's time travel or time manipulation in a show, it just allows writers and people who make movies to, to get lazy. The only thing that isn't that way is Doctor Who. Doctor Who is the only show that doesn't do lazy time travel. But other than that, if there's time travel, it just allows people to be lazy. Time space continuum. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. care for that much. I mean, I did like Heroes just because I like the show and I, I like the characters more so than anything. But then when they had that first writer strike, they effed it up after that. It was like done. So. Well, and that's what happened in Heroes, too, is like Heroes was doing really good, and then they got completely offline because they knew that they could just fix it all with time travel. Right. You know, and it just... um, What's that other show I've been watching that's got time traveling? I mean, this is off base. We're talking about this week. So what else you want to talk about? Because I'm here. I'm at your disposal, man. Um, what you got? I've got to, I still got to find out what boofing is, apparently. <laughs> I'm going to Google that. After yeah, let's not try and figure that out. Hold on, let me look on my other phone. If he won't say it, I'll say it. You know, I'll, I'll say some crazy Well, we're going to try and keep it PG-13. Um, let me read some of these comments. Okay. Uh, Derek says, I love how, I love the way they affect y'all out, and y'all were thinking Okoye was going to get dusted away, and then T'Challa started drifting. Yeah, that was like, everybody was like, <gasps> like, even me, even though I knew that there was going to be another one. Yeah. Um, time travel is the, is cheap in sci-fi the same way that putting a man in a dress is cheap in comedy. This is what Derek says. Um, that is Kevin valid, Andrew. 
Oh, wait, there's a couple other ones. Kevin says the only hope is the time stone Dr. Strange gave up. Right, which I was thinking, I'm like, if you have a time stone, you can always fix things. So, which I get, it's fragile, but still. And then the only time tra only time travel movie I like is X-Men Days of Future Past, which I liked all that because I like the fact that they brought that one full circle. Uh, Derek says everyone gasped when Tony got stabbed. Everyone thought he was a goner. I mean, it's just a little stabation, though, like... People don't survive from less, you know, take them over to Wakanda, put, put roll one of them little balls in on there, it'd be straight. Pause. So the question is, did Pepper Potts get ashy? Say what? Did Pepper Potts get ashy? That's a good question. And is she really going to be pregnant? Like, I know that's like the thing to do, but Tony had a dream that she was pregnant. So why not let her be pregnant and have a little Tony Stark Jr. or something like that? Maybe. I think to me, the most exciting thing about Infinity War is going to be the follow on of it all, where we get to reinvent all these characters with new actors and new storylines. And you get to watch all the angry white people get like so mad because it's going to be like different races and genders of like what the, so like the alt right comic book fans are going to like lose their fucking minds in about three years when we start reinventing all these characters. It's going to be great. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Derek said she made a big... Pepper, Derek says Pepper is pregnant, and then he also said that she made a big deal about him getting off the ship before her connection went out. Me too. I was trying to, like, listen extra hard, like, like she was going to say, I really am pregnant. Like, I know she wasn't going to say it like that, but I was, like, listening really hard because she seemed really adamant about him not being on that little donut alien ship thingy, whatever it's called. Yeah. Can we talk about how underrated the bad guy was that was on the Donut Alien ship, though? Like, he only got, like, a few moments of fame. But that motherfucker Squidward. was legit. Yeah, Squidward was wrecking shop, man. Yeah, I talked about that in the beginning when I first came on, how part of his crew, I'm like, they were, they were tight. I like that. Like, they weren't some weak sides. Yeah, he's like, you got the best of the best. Yeah, I mean, I didn't really like the I didn't really like the other three, but he was legit because he kind of had that like low key like kung fu master, right? You know, Raiden type vibe going on. Like, yeah, yeah, I, I enjoyed Dick, him Dick a said lot. Ebony Maw is the dude. I think it's M A U R. I think it's Mar, but yes, Ebony Mar, Black Mar, yes, was. Uh, <laughs> and he just quoted him. He said, "Stone Bear, does this animal speak for you?" <laughs> All, I loved yeah. all of the puns. I love all of them. My favorite was the rabbit one. I said that earlier. I feel like I'm starting to repeat myself. So um, do you have anything else? Uh, well, I don't know. Let's talk about like the movie theater experience. Was yours like lots of cheering and stuff like that when people were in there? I don't feel like it was. Like the, the most responsive I feel like everyone was was at the end where people started poofing away. You were like, wait, what? <gasps> so... <laughs> So the theater I went and saw it in, I must have been in, like, fanboy theater because, like, every time, like, a character was reintroduced, like, and I think this thing, movie-going experiences are so important about the crowd that's in there. So, like, and I'm not, like, a clap in the movies guy, but I, I will say it enhanced my experience <laughs> because, like, every time a major character would come in, so, like, when Thor showed back up, like, especially when he came back down with the damn group hatchet from hell or whatever, like everybody was cheering and going crazy. The first time Black Panther showed up, people was going crazy. The other part I liked is, um, and I didn't realize how big of a character she got, but Shuri, everyone really liked Shuri. When yes. Shuri showed back we up, like she got a cheer. Yeah. Well, I mean, I liked it too, but I didn't realize that it was like, it wasn't just me who thought she was dope. I liked the and mother then, um, sister bond from them. That's yeah. Well, even, even seeing M'Baku, everybody was geeked about that. And then, um, you know, the only thing I wish they would have had, though, it would have been cool if some of those angry-ass rhinoceroses were going at the damn space aliens. That would have been neat. Say that one more time. The vibranium armored rhinoceros, like, going against the space alien, that would have been kind of cool to see. Yeah, that um, would have been a fight, probably. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess they killed them all. I don't know. Um, um, yeah, no, I thought everything was... There's a couple of comments. Um, Kevin says they're going to be really mad when Captain Marvel comes out. <laughs> Never mind she's a lady in the comics, but I can hear them now saying she was created to be politically correct. He's talking about the alt-right folks. Yeah, and then uh, Miles Morales is the black Spider-Man. That's what Derek was talking about. And then Lady Thor, yeah. 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 
I'm interested to see when all that stuff reinvents how it goes. But no, I, I think my movie my movie theater experience was cool because people were like really into it. Like I'm not about to clap or get excited, but I will say like when everyone else is geeked, it kind of enhances the energy in the movie theater. So yeah. it was cool. And I think that's why like remember when like streaming movies kind of first started and like when Blockbuster and Hollywood Video went away and they're talking about the movie like they were thinking that the movie theaters weren't still going to be around. And I was always saying that to me, they're always going to be around because of that, because of that movie theater experience, sitting there, the smell of popcorn, being with their friends, seeing it on this giant screen. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, I don't think that's ever going anywhere. I don't care how advanced. We well, and I think, I think that's why movie theaters stepped their game up. That's why we have like the dining experiences and the yes. recliners and the IMAX and the GTX and the RPX and all that stuff. Like, how did you see your, like, what uh, format did you see it um, in? I don't know. It wasn't IMAX and it wasn't 3D. It was, like, regular. I saw it at 9.30 a.m. Um, the Friday after my birthday because that was the only time I could get a ticket, so. Yeah, so I saw it in IMAX at 11.30. That's probably why I had a more of a, PM a crowd. PM or AM? Okay, so, okay. Yeah, yeah I'm actually... I, I honestly, I think that movie would have had something taken away from it in, in 3D. I saw it in 2D. I just didn't think the 3D would, would work as well as seeing it in 2D. But I, I think for me, like, the reason movie theaters will never die is until we get to a point where, like, because the, the audio is really what makes a movie a movie. Because especially when you get to VR headsets and all other stuff, like, we can make great screens on your face or whatever. That's fine. But there's something about that, like, earth shaking yes, ridiculous that, that vibration of your seat yeah. <laughs> when that explosion yeah. happens yeah 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 um and i honestly like i like imax but i say this like the atlantic station regal if you go see a movie there in rpx the dolby atmos setup they're having there the sound is stupid like super mm. stupid but it's so expensive because you know regal is like the most the Regal Atlantic Station is like the most expensive theater in town. Yeah. Like 22, 25 bucks for a ticket. They smoke and crack over there. And then if I see it um, at the IMAX, I, I feel like I have to see it at the Mall of Georgia <laughs> IMAX. I can't see it at any other one because they're just, to me, they're not comparable. They're just not. I, I, tell you, I tell you what's crazy is one of my friends in D.C., I saw him post that he went and saw it at the National Air and Space Museum. And that theater is dumb big. Like Where the is screen that is. At? It's in DC, oh. on the outskirts of DC. Yeah, <laughs> that thing is ridiculous. It's probably like one of the biggest IMAX screens in America. I couldn't imagine seeing it on that because you know that's the thing is like sometimes IMAX is so big, like you're looking around onto where is my eye supposed to look on the screen. Mm. Um, you see, Derek says you like your seat vibrating for different reasons. Yeah, I saw that, and I'm just like, bless your heart. That's my business. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> you having a real 3D experience with the 4D at that point. 4D. <laughs> y'all need Jesus. Okay. Uh, Derek said yeah. Gravity in 3D was one of the greatest movie viewing experiences I had. And you know what? I was that was with Sandra Bullock and George Clooney, right? That movie was really good to me. It was really like I was really anticipating. Like I think I probably was holding my breath at points in that movie. Did you ever see that? Yeah, they did a good job. Yeah, they did a good job with the face acting. Kind of like how, like, Tom Hardy and um, Dunkirk, where, like, the entire movie was just him through a mask. Like, you could tell they did a really good job of, like, making their faces act for them. I haven't seen Dunkirk, but I need to see that. Dunkirk is an acquired taste. You, it's just, it's, it's an acquired I, taste. I don't, I don't, war movies, I don't really do those that much. <laughs> yeah, the, the difference with this was, it was more so about the harrowing plight of like the people on the beach than it was about like gory action scenes. Like, you know, did you see Fury? No. Uh, okay. Anyway, I'll, I'll spare you the, the, the conversation on all of that. But yeah, uh, yeah, some movies are better seen. Like, I think like the comedy movies and stuff like that, I don't care what theater I see it in. I'll see it in regular, I'll see it in the dollar movie theater. I don't care about that. But if it's like a good, like, I feel like it was a Marvel movie. It's a Star Wars movie. Like, when Solo comes out, you got to see that stuff in 3D. And I'm actually kind of dreading it because I'm going to be, uh, for some of the movies coming out this summer, I'm going to be overseas, and I'm going to hate having to watch them in, like, overseas deployed theater. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I'm, I'm depressed because I've seen those previews and I've seen the dates from the movies we're going to air. I'm like, oh, I'm not going to be able to watch this in a good theater. So that okay. was disappointing. One but. last question. And I'll ask this to uh -huh. anyone who wants to come in. Which trailer did you enjoy the most and which one are you more excited to see? 
Ooh, so trailer I enjoyed the most. That solo tra- trailer was really good. Okay. The solo trailer was so good because it gave you so much more. Mm-hmm. Um, but because it's Tom Hardy and he's such a good actor, I'm really excited about Venom. Okay. Venom looks like it's going to be amazing. Yeah. Um, I didn't see Incredibles wasn't on my preview track. I didn't see Incredibles on my preview track, Derek. I had like six trailers in my movie theater and I missed one of them. So I'm like, what do, like it was to the point where I was like, can we get the movie started? Like, seriously. For me, it was, what's, what's, mine was actually Venom because I wasn't that into it when I heard it was coming out. So I was like, oh, Venom's coming out. I was like, oh, okay, who cares? And then I saw it and I was like, oh, I, I, might, need, I might need to see this one. So yeah, it, it did. Well, the crazy thing about the crazy thing about the Venom trailer is it didn't even give you that much. It just gave you Tom Hardy like seizing on the table and like just little taste. It, enough, it didn't though. give you a whole lot. <laughs> yes, yes it was. But that solo trailer was legit. Legit. I wasn't legit, as legit. I wasn't as, as, as excited about that one. I'm excited. FYI, see on my myself. screen you're frozen again. I don't know. I don't know if you're frozen on other. No, I can see still. Oh nope, he's gone. All right, he's gone. All right. Um. All right, that's it. We've gone way... We're on a whole nother 16 minutes. Um, did anybody want to come in and give their two cents really quickly? Five cents, three cents, ten cents. Anyone? I'll give a minute to see them pop up. And if no one pops up, then I will go ahead and end this, and I'll try to... Oh, here comes Derek. He wants to come back on real quick. Let's see. See what he's got. See what he's got to say. He's got anything nice to say. <laughs> one thing to say. Do you ever have one thing to say, Derek Henderson? I don't have any sound for you, Derek. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Thank you, Verizon. Okay. All right. I can see you getting over it now. <laughs> no. One thing, one thing I want to say was I, I love the fact that, um, like, Tony, Tony started the whole thing, the whole thing, and he changed his uh, mindset. And then since, ever since Avengers... He's been obsessed with the whole, the earth is in danger. We got to find a way to protect it, which is why he created Ultron, the whole civil war, of course, things. He's just kind of like become obsessed to it. And even though he like, his motivation is always good. He always ends up effing it up some type of way, but he's always smart enough and resourceful enough to fix it. Right. And so since then, so up to this movie, now he finally comes face to face with the ultimate threat that he always knew was coming, mm-hmm. and he doesn't know if he was prepared for it. Well, you see, his suit has—he's evolved his suit to nanotechnology, right. and that scene where he gave Thanos. So he's face to face with his biggest nightmare, and he gave Thanos the business, everything that he had, and you know, Thanos was just like all of that for a drop of blood. And you see Tony still like, but just his fierceness and his his ability to just to be like this is what it is and he was really like heroic in 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 that sense even though he was massively out outmatched right or whatever and uh to see spider-man fade away and to see like everything that he spider-man was the worst somebody said that his was the worst yeah and to see him see that and to see his sort of surrogate son like pass away and to see his failure like tony has never failed at anything he's done Next. So even with his f ups, he always comes back and fixes. He's never felt this type of failure before. So I really, lo- I really love that about his uh, his character and that like, he sold it. The actor sold it uh, in it. So I really like that about the Tony Stark character. So and and, la- and what it. um what trailer did you enjoy the most in, that that you are anticipating? Say that. Say that again. You were going what? in and out. What trailer did you enjoy the most that you are anticipating? What movie? Oh, probably Incredibles 2 because there was Jurassic. I had Jurassic World 2, which is sort of like, okay, I saw the all the Jurassic World. It was better than I expected, but I mean, I mean, I guess I'll go see it. It's, I mean, I know the, the, the recipe. What else did I have? <laughs> Harry Potter, the Harry Potter thing. I've never seen a Harry Potter movie in my life, so it's kind of dry. <laughs> Um and then what was there was a solo movie which I'll go see but I didn't really particularly like the trailer that much. Yeah. I mean I'm just gonna go see it because it's a Han Solo um, right. prequel and it's gonna be just Solo and uh, Chewbacca and there's a young Lando Calrissian so probably those two and I can't even remember what the other um preview was Venom. I didn't have that, as many previews as you do I didn't have I didn't get to see the Venom one Venom was good so, it, it put me on it, I'm yeah, convinced so it would probably be interesting. <laughs> Did you have the incredible? Did you have the Incredibles two yes. uh, trailer? I, I I love the Incredibles. Everyone, 
yeah, everyone laughed at the end of the Samuel Jackson character when he was, was like, I'll, I'll, I'll be back. I'll be gone. Ace, I'll be over there ASAP. You gonna be with ASAP? Like I could totally do that voice. You better be. You better be back here ASAP. <laughs> right. <laughs> Everybody started laughing. That's exactly what we were saying. Uh, Mike says he was. Um, he was more sad about Groot's Groot's death, and um, Douglas said Groot can be replanted. So he's cool. All right. Thank you. you can't replant what doesn't exist. You just anyway. you better scrape some of those ashes together and put some water in it and make it happen. How about that? I am dust. All right, bye. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> Thanks for whoever joined. I appreciate you. Thanks, everybody. Have a good night. Bye.